Well, it is time for some holiday creating. It is getting colder outside and in different parts of the country. We're already seeing some snow, so we know that the winter holidays are on the way. So we're going to get started welcoming those holidays in by creating a little house that includes a bird. So let's check out what we're going to need for this project. The first item is going to be this canoe and it can be purchased at your local craft store. And as we create the project, you have an option here. It has a little drawer, and you can opt not to include the drawer if you like this style better. I'm gonna actually include the drawer, but that is an option that you can take if you like. We're gonna need some brushes. I've got these two right now. And you can tell these are my nasty brushes. I just use them for everything. Uh, this one is about probably an inch and a half to two inches and this one's about an inch. You'll probably want some freezer paper. I'll just lay that down when I paint. Uh, so that's essentially all I'm going to need that for. You're going to want some gesso, white gesso. You'll need a container of glass beads. You can get these either in Liquitex or Golden. You'll want to have some Zots, unless you decide not to use any lighting. If you decide not to include the lighting, you don't need the Zots. As far as lighting goes, I've got these uh, little lights here. They're really tiny, tiny lights. They're about 18 on the string, and the uh, length total overall is 36 inches, but that also includes the battery pack and so forth. And you can get these at your local craft store as well. I'm going to use this Titan Green Pail Golden for part of my canoe. Um, you can paint your entire canoe white if you want. You can choose a different color, but I'm trying to go with a little bit of a pale green, so I think this is going to look really nice on the inside. And then I'm also going to use this gold mother of pearl paint. You can see it here. It just has a little pearlized look to it on top of the white areas. Maybe the green, but definitely the white. If you can't locate this gold mother of pearl, the other option that you could choose is this iridescent medium. So you can either mix this with the paint colors that you want to use, which I highly suggest, or you can paint your canoe and then put this on top. You can paint another layer. I find that when I mix it with the paint color it works a lot better but um, you're supposed to be able to use it either way. And then we're going to need a few pieces to create the interior of our canoe. So I've just chosen a few of these items. So this one has a little bit of greenery, some pine, a pine cone, um, some eucalyptus beading here. This one is just a spray of red beads with a little bit of what I would say are glass beads on top of it. And then I have this spray that has some more of these pine cones, a little bit of a log roll here, some more greenery with a little bit of frosting on the end in this case. I have a little owl, really cute little owl. And again, you don't have to use the owl. If you have a cardinal, you can use that, whatever bird you like or animal that you like. And it doesn't have to be white, but I thought this would stand out very nicely. So I'm gonna go with that. And then I have a little star and this little star is going to go right here at the top. So that is another option for you. If you want a star, you can choose any star that you want. You can add berries up here, whatever you would like to include here. But in this case, um, I decided that this little star was really cute, so I want to use that to kind of give it that homey cabin feel. 
All right, we're also going to be needing a glue gun. Any glue gun is fine. I have this really tiny, tiny one. And you'll need some glue sticks or this glue roll. So this is a whole roll of glue. Um, these are cool. I like using them because it prevents me from having to constantly stick another stick in there. It can be a bit troublesome because as you're trying to maneuver, the, the glue is going all different ways. So uh, you'll have to choose your poison there, either having to insert the glue sticks quite a bit or just navigating the use of this. And we have a few other pieces that we didn't include in the previous frame because we were kind of running out of room. <laughs> so uh, the, the other components that you'll need, you'll need a screwdriver, just a small one, so that you can take off a component um, of the little boat that we're using. Um, you're going to want some wire cutters. You will probably want something to cut with, so I've got some box cutters here, and I think that'll work. If you also have a foam knife, a foam craft knife, that would be just fine. You're going to want some moss. Now, the type of moss that I have is actually dual colored, so you have the regular Spanish moss, kind of the, the brownish look, and then you have some that have been colored the green. I'm going to mostly use this brown color, and I may kind of intersperse a few of these pieces as well, but it's this color that we'll mostly be using. You're going to want one of these foam pieces. Now this is a half ball, you can see here, and ultimately what we're going to do is we're even going to cut this further, okay? And then you're probably going to want some candy. Now you're only going to need the candy if you decide to include the drawer in the canoe or the little boat that we're using. If you decide that you don't want to use the drawer, you won't need this. And, and actually, um, if you decide to use the drawer for some other reason, maybe stash a little note in there, a little card or something, you don't have to have the candy. I just think that's going to be a cute idea, which is why I'm including it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started then. All right, we're going to get started. The first thing that we want to do is to remove the drawer. If you're not going to use the drawer, then you don't have to worry about painting the drawer, but I am, so I will be painting that. And then on the back of this canoe, typically, you'll find that it has this little hanging piece. So we want to go ahead and take that off. and just set it aside where we know we can find it later. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the inside because if I paint that first, then when I flip it over I, to paint all of this, that can be drying inside, so that's not a problem. Just don't paint this portion yet, okay? If you do, then you'll have to let it set for a while, and that's okay. In fact, I may go ahead and do that. I'll do this entire side here, and then probably do this, and then come back and finish up here. And it's likely that we're going to be needing two layers of gesso, so it just depends. When you paint, check to see how thick the white is. You want it to look white overall, not a little bit white with some brown showing through. Um, so you'll just have to gauge that. Now before you get started, I would take either a rag or a piece of paper towel and just kind of make sure that there's no dirt, dust, or anything like that settling down on that. You also may find that there are going to be some places here, like you can see right here, where there's a little bit of wood sticking out. I like that. I think it looks really cool. Um, if you're bothered by that, you can certainly take a piece of sandpaper or a sanding block and sand that down just to smooth it out. But it doesn't bother me, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Now, when I paint with gesso, I'm typically very messy. Um, I don't worry so much about things. I'll pour a little bit in like that and just start painting. And remember I suggested that we're probably going to have to have 
at least two layers put onto this wood. This first layer is going to help create the the layer between the green and this um, wood. We're also going to use gesso on the outside. That'll help create the white that we'll need to indicate snow. And it's also going to help that white shine really nicely when we use our glass gel. Okay, so we're going to just continue painting. And don't forget that when you paint with the gesso, you want to also get the bottom of these pieces too because our eye doesn't normally train on these areas. Sometimes we forget them. Or maybe I should say I forget them. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue painting with the gesso, the entire piece. I'm gonna do it at least twice and then after the two times, I'm going to assess the piece, make sure it's as white as I want it to be. Uh, if it's not, you can also pull some white paint in and paint with that on top of the gesso, but hopefully your gesso will be white enough that you won't have to do that, and then we'll begin the next layer of painting, all right? So uh, go ahead and finish covering the entire piece with gesso at least two times. Some of you, depending on the gesso that you're using, it may take three, but two to three should be plenty. All right, and then we'll come back together. I used about two layers of the gesso and it's pretty white. I can still see some of the striations from the, the wood, but I think that's okay because we're gonna do some things that will cover that up anyway. So you have an option now, you can leave the entire piece white if that's what you prefer. However, I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna use this Titan Green Pail. And I'm gonna paint the inside. And when I paint the inside, I want to make sure that these pieces right here, this one, this edge here, and the entire edge here, along with this piece here, remain white. So I'm gonna paint the entire interior this green color, okay? And then with the drawer, if you've decided to use the drawer, I would also paint the drawer that green color as well. Okay, so I'm using a smaller brush because I'm going to be doing really um, clean edges right here, especially right here around this edge. If by chance you happen to get some of the green up here, so let me show you this, this piece right here, okay, it's an extension of this right here. If you get a little bit on there, just wipe it off and then you can come back later and fix up any of those areas that you might want to fix up. So I'm just going to take Again, this is Titan Green Pale from Golden. And what I want to start doing first is laying this on its side and getting an edge here. So I'm going to take this brush and just run it up along that edge just like I was lining this. Now if you think that the green is a little too much and you want to soften it, you can add white paint or you can add some gesso to it. Okay, so this is what I'm doing right here. I'm just edging this. Just be very careful when you do it. It can be a little difficult because of the angle that you have to work at, but it can be done. One thing this type of 
painting teaches me is patience, which I, I don't usually have a lot of. So it is a good thing to have it. To get it really close to that edge that you're working on, you can dip the corner of your brush and then paint along there, okay? So right now all I'm doing is just edging. We're gonna be really careful coming in here. And you'll notice that when I pick up color, I kind of wipe a bunch of it off. That's because I don't want a lot of excess paint to go squishing in different directions when I'm not ready for it. Okay, so that'll work that. And then I'm going to move into this area up in here. And again, just get that edging. And because we've used the gesso on the interior, as I move into these other portions and paint with this green paint, I won't need probably but just one layer, okay? So now I'm gonna come to this side and I'm just gonna double check what occurred over here if I see any areas that need to be touched up. For this edging, I'm gonna go ahead and touch it up Okay, and then start on this side. If you find by chance that your paint is drying just a little too fast, you can spritz it with some water, just a little spritz and mix it up in there. Mine's feeling a little bit drier because I have these bright lights right over where I'm working. But I'm not yet ready to use any water on it. So again, all we're doing is we're just creating an edge here before we start painting the rest. come down here and do this edge. If you decide to use the water, just make sure that you don't spray too much in there because if you use too much water then you'll actually change the properties of the paint and you don't want to do that, okay? Now remember, we're not going to paint this one. This is going to stay white, so we're going to have to be careful with that. So I would suggest now to take your green and paint just to the edge. And you can actually, actually just paint up to the edge. And then that'll make it easier when you have to paint the rest. You can also go this direction. Just be careful that you're not pulling it over the edge too much. You just want to kind of maybe tap that edge just to cover it. Okay. And then we'll do the same on the bottom portion because we're going to paint this as well. So remember you can, here we go. You can paint this way. Just be careful not to load your brush up too much because you don't want the green coming off that edge. Okay, 
just make sure that the edges are colored in so that you have that green edge there but that you're leaving this white and you'll see here that I have a, a few places here that are a little bit green so I can come back and touch that up that's not a problem all right now that I have these edges done I can come back in with my larger brush which still has gesso but that's not a problem and I'm going to load that brush up and then just start painting that interior see how well that color is coming out on that since we put the gesso down it created that little barrier that we need As you're painting this interior with the color that you've chosen, just remember that quite a bit of this is going to be covered in once we add some of our sprays. So it doesn't have to be perfect, all right? It just has to be covered. So I'm going to turn it around and work this way. And you see, I'm, I'm not being very precise about anything. So what we're going to want to do then is just to continue painting the interior. Just making sure that we don't put any color on the edges here. So we want that to be white. And then be careful up here at the top, there's a, a little crook right in here where this piece goes to and stops. So it stops about an inch away from the edge up in here. So I would suggest getting the smaller brush and working around that. Just to make sure you get the color in there. layers you can certainly dry them with a heat gun or with your blow dryer if you want to work a little bit faster it's not going to hurt anything just be sure that before you put the next layer on that it is actually dry Especially when you get to these other layers you've already got a few layers on there so you want to make sure that you get these other layers dried even more because they're sitting on top of other layers okay and then always double check as it starts drying, you may find areas that you thought you painted over, but that the paint didn't actually get into. You just go back and add more, just to touch them up. And again, remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's an old canoe that the bird's going to take up residence in. So it's not going to be perfect. Now 
as you work some of these tighter areas don't get too excited because you're close to being done because that's usually when you'll make a mistake so just try to be patient I completely understand wanting to hurry through this but just be patient Now, although I'm making this specifically for the winter holiday, you can certainly change the design a bit and you can make something that you can decorate your home with all during the year. Okay, so here I forgot to do an edge, so I'll just take my smaller brush and work that edge and then I can come back with the larger one and fix that okay And again, if you feel like your paint's getting a little dry, just spritz it. Okay, I'm getting close to being done with my green. And then again, just kind of double check. You know, as I said before, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? You want some of the ribbing from the wood showing to add some character. Okay. I think that's it. So you see what I did. It's just the interior and I left these portions white. So I'm gonna let that set just a moment. I'm gonna rinse my brushes off. Um, I may hit it with a heat gun and then just kind of check it over just to make sure that if you have any spots left that you cover them in. And then I'm also going to just barely tap my gesso with my fingers. I'm just going to put a little bit of gesso on my finger just for this little area that I mentioned before. And If you see any other spots on yours where you have a little bit of the green and it should be white, just tap it with your finger. Just be careful not to get any splinters. It's really easy to do that with this project. Okay, so we'll let that dry a few minutes. I'm gonna rinse my brushes out and then we're gonna go to the next step. For this next section, we're going to do it in two steps. So the first step will be where we use our glass beads. And for this, you're going to need a palette knife if you have one. If you don't, you can use an old um, hotel card, an old credit card, whatever, but just something that has some heft to it so it, it isn't too bendy, okay? Um, this is better because you can use it to get it up into certain points. Um, this is good because it will you know, pull a lot of coverage all at one time. You're also gonna want, if you want to do this, the Gold Mother of Pearl. So you're gonna need just a small paintbrush. But we're gonna start off with this first and then this will be our, our second level, okay? So what I'm going to do is just put the bead gel on these edges and up here on the top, okay? So the edge, up here on this portion, this edge, and then maybe this area here. And then we're gonna take the Gold Mother of Pearl and we'll paint just this little edging portion. 
Okay? So, there is no exact science to working with these glass beads. So you'll see here, if I pick it up, you can see the little beads in there. Okay, so I would start somewhere around in here and you're just going to layer it on there. There's no exact science, you're just going to pull it. You don't want it too thick and you also don't want it bunched up all together. You want this to kind of look like nature got to it. So we're not going to cover the entire thing. Okay, and you can hear it as I, when I grab some and I lay that, that down and I start pulling, you can hear it. Okay, so I would go and just move it as you can. And again, remember, you don't want thick pieces. So just cover a little bit at a time. Move it as you need to. Make sure you get it up here into this edging. So you may just want to pull a little bit, put it up in that edging and move it. The other way that you could do this, if you have the card, is maybe just take, you know, a skewer or popsicle stick, put some of these layers down like I'm doing here with it, and then you can take the card and just start pulling. Of course, it'll get some on the card, so that'll help you come back and add some more. Just remember if you pull too much off you can always add it back so don't panic about that and then you can always use the card to help you get in those corners too and you'll see that some of it is coming up on this side edge here so you can just take your card and pull it off of there okay going to show you something in just a minute because this looks almost like I've put it all the way on there and essentially I have I'm still working these edges just to make sure it gets up there in those edges And also, as you're doing this, take a look at how the beads are spread out. For instance, this end right here doesn't really have any beads at all, and I've got a ton right here, so I kind of want to move those around a little bit, spread them out if I can, or if it's not spreading out very well, just add some more right here. Okay, just again, make sure that it's not too thick. and also not too thin, okay? So I'm just patching is, is essentially what I'm doing right now. Anywhere that I see that I don't have enough beads or if I have a, a huge space that hasn't been covered, I'm just going to come back in and put that on there. All right, what I want to do now, because it looks right now like it's just one big sheet, and I don't want it to look like one big sheet of glass bead gel. So I'm going to take just a paper towel. Now this one has a design on it, which is fine. And I'm just going to very easily lay that on there and pull up. 
so that it looks like it has more texture and it's not just one sheet. Okay? So you don't want to pull too hard or press too hard, but you want it to at least stick. Now it's not looking to me like a huge sheet of glass bead gels. It's got more texture to it. Something like a peak is coming up. So just kind of look and see where you have that. And just work with it. Okay, so I have some nice little peaks here. It doesn't look like one huge sheet of glass bead gel. And then I'm going to take my card or whatever you have again and just run it here just to make sure that you don't have anything sticking out. Okay. And then we're going to do that on this end as well just to make sure nothing's sticking out there. Now once we've gotten to this point, just kind of stand it up and look at it. Make sure it's got a lot of texture and it's not just one sheet of glass bead gel. Make sure that you don't have huge gaping holes. And I think I'm good with that. So now that we have done this side, we're going to have to do this side standing up, okay, because we don't want to lay it down this way. So we're going to leave it standing up. And I'm just going to put some here at the top and start bringing it down just so it doesn't drip off. And you'll get kind of a feel for how much you need. So can always start off with a little bit and then come back and add more. So I'm just going to run this down again like we did before and keep pulling it in different directions. So as I come back up, remember that I have some of this on the back of the card and that's coming up. And I'm going to try to get it towards the edge without going all the way over the edge. And then I can start at the bottom and pull this way. And then again, if you have some holes up against the side here, just start adding some more of the glass bead gel. Just kind of get it to the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you also don't want it to be straight edged. I'm going to try and hold this up this way so you can see more of what I'm doing. So I'll just push a little bit of it back up here against this edge. Remember it doesn't all have to be there, but you want to you want to make sure that you don't have just a straight edge there. covered pretty well. And then remember we're going to just check the edges to make sure nothing's sticking out there or here. I mean if you have a little bit sticking out it's fine. You just don't want a lot sticking out. And then of course clean up your card and your palette knife before it dries and you'll want to rinse it off too. Okay, and I'm going to take my paper towel again, and remember we're just going to pull it up and just keep doing this until it starts creating those peaks. 
So I'll show you what I mean. You can see some really good peaks here, so it's not all flat. Here it's a little bit flatter, so I'm just going to play with that a little bit more. And don't panic if you pull too much off or rub it like I just did. Just go back and do it again. And maybe just move some of that back up. Okay. So I think I've got some nice peaks there. Let me just try one more place right here. Okay, so now I'm going to lay that down and let that dry. Be careful not to touch it. Don't grab it this way. And what we're going to do now is use the Gold Mother of Pearl, or if you decided to, you can also use this iridescent medium. But I really like the way that this looks, so this is what I'm going to use. It has kind of a, an iridescent gold tone to it. So I'm going to be very careful here. I'm just going to pull out. a little bit here and I'm actually going to start up at this top point. And I'm gonna come in tight so hopefully you can see the difference in color when I put it on. Okay so I'm just gonna barely put it on there. And you'll be able to see the difference. You can see kind of a gold tone here and how this is pure white. Alright, now I'm going to do just one layer for the moment. And then we'll probably come back in and do one more. So I want to give it that suggestion of winter. You know, the shiny colors in the snow. Now if you want to, you can use this on the inside, but the reason that I don't think that that would be something that I would do is because I'm trying to give this juxtaposition of the rustic look in, uh, in the interior and the beautiful work of nature on the exterior. So nature in winter has, here in the, in the U.S., has snow, ice, and so forth. So I want to kind of give it that juxtaposition of that rustic look and that dreamy look. I will tell you that if you do use this on the green, you're going to love it. It's just gorgeous. So again, we're just giving the suggestion of snow, ice. And that's one layer on there. I'm going to give it a minute. So it's got a nice little sheen to it already. What I think I might do even though I don't want it completely on the inside, I think I'll do it on this bar right here. Just across the bar. Ok, 
Okay. So I'm going to put one more layer on. Again, remember, this is just a suggestion of the season. And I think you'll get a very similar result using the iridescent medium. But I just love this color here, so. Okay, so we're gonna let this paint dry, let the gel medium dry. I would let this sit overnight just to make sure that gel medium is completely done. And I think that I'm also going to paint this little portion here. So let me lift it up so you can see it. It's this portion right here. You can also, if you want to, use the gel medium, the bead gel medium. But not much of this is going to be seen because I, in my case, I'm going to be putting a star in front of it. Maybe a little bit along the edge here. So now I'm just going to let this sit dry overnight. That way the paint will really be dry. All the layers, the gel medium will be dry. And if you happen to get up in the morning and the gel medium is not completely dry, just let it sit. Don't mess with it yet. Okay, because we need for that to be completely dry before we start working with the interior design. Okay, so let it dry and we'll come back together and we'll finish it up. Now that I have my canoe completely painted and also my drawer, um, I just wanted to show you what they look like. So you can see this is dried very nicely. It gives it a nice little frosty look. And then you can see kind of that gold shining here on this piece of wood and you could probably see it a little bit on the white here. Okay, and I also finished up painting the drawer. The drawer is all green. Now one thing that you'll notice is that there might be a few places here and there that are still kind of a little bit white. I'm not worried about that because remember this is not supposed to look perfect. It's supposed to look, look slightly lived in. The birds will be creating a nest, so we know that it's not going to be something that's perfect, okay? So this is what I have right now, and it's looking pretty cute. So what we want to do now is to take our half ball, our half foam ball, and we're going to cut this so that it fits. And I'm going to remove this because I don't really need that at the moment. But what I want to do is to eventually put this inside because that's where we're going to end up putting our sprays. We're going to insert them into this foam. But you'll see here that the foam is larger, of course, than this shelf that we're placing it on. So what we need to do, if you have a pencil, um, or you could even take your screwdriver and just run a line 
where the edge of the shelf comes. Okay, so you can see the line there that I made. All right, now keep in mind that the line that I made is on the edge of the shelf but I want to cut it so that it's a little bit further back because I want to have a little bit of ledge showing, just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna take where I made my line and I'm gonna actually make another line about a quarter of an inch and just kind of draw it on there. And then that's where I'm actually gonna end up cutting and I'll use this piece here. So, this can be really messy, so I would suggest that you get a piece of paper towel or um, some type of parchment paper, something, you know, a newspaper, something that you could put under there to cap capture or catch the excess that's going to come off. So we'll take this plastic part off first. All right, and then this is where I want to make my cut. So I'll bring it in a little bit. I'm going to get my box cutter, and you can all, <laughs> once you open it up, you can feel it. It's going to get everywhere. So we'll go a little bit easy here. So I'm pulling out this box cutter, and essentially what I'm going to do is just kind of start cutting into it. You see how easily it cuts. And so I'll just try to match this up. It doesn't matter if it's a little off. Alright, and then we're going to try and pop it. Uh, not not far down enough, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that in even further. And remember, this is going to be covered, so if your line is not completely straight, it's fine. Alright, we're going to try and pop it. There we go. So I have two pieces now. One hopefully will be the one that I really want to use, but I do have another half if something should go wrong. And we can try it out. So this, I believe, is the piece that I want. And we're going to give this a try. So I'm going to put the cut portion here. And it's going to face the back of the canoe. and I'm going to put it in there. Now, you decide exactly where you might want it to go. Now, I'm going to put mine probably here in the center, but you do have some other options. You can actually put it off to the side, and that way you could have a little branch coming here if you wanted to. Um, you know, either side would be fine. So we have that piece. Now if I try my other piece, and which is what I want you to do, I want you to audition so that you can kind of see. They're pretty close in size. This one is a little bit wider, so it comes closer to this edge. So you have to decide which piece you want. I'm, I'm kind of digging on this smaller one. So I think that that's what I'm going to go with. So let's talk about what we're going to do here. Let me remove this and then we'll start up with this. We're going to get started now on working on the interior of our canoe. We're going to do a little bit on the exterior, but for the most part the exterior is done and we're going to need our canoe, the foam piece that we just cut, we'll need our hot glue gun, you'll need some of the Zots, and these have very tiny, you can see the difference between my fingernail and the Zot, I would say it's probably, oh, 
It's a little bit larger than an eighth of an inch for sure. And then I have these LED string lights, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna create this. There are a few options you can work with, so that's kind of up to you, however you want to work it. Although I'm using a hot glue gun, you can also use tacky glue. I would not suggest using Gorilla Glue because for some reason it seems to eat up the foam, so we don't want it to do that. Um, the lights can be an option. If you decide that you don't want to add the lights, that's perfectly fine. You can leave this just as it is on the exterior, but the lights I think are going to be cute, so you might want to consider using those. When I attach this foam piece, I want to make sure that the bottom is secure. There might be a little bit of spacing back here, and I'm not too worried about that because that's going to be covered over. You're not going to see it anyway, but I want to make sure that this portion is secure. So what I'm going to do is just put my hot glue all over the bottom. and then put it into the canoe wherever you would like it. Remember, um, you can do it right in the middle. You can kind of offset left or right, whatever you want. Push that down a little bit to make sure that that glue is sticking to the wood and also getting into the foam so that it creates some nice contact there. Okay, so that's in there pretty nicely. Just remember too, these are kind of soft, so you don't want to squish them. <laughs> you want to, you know, be gentle with them. So I'm going to use these LED lights because I think they're really cute and I think they're going to make it uh, kind of a point of interest. So again, this is a 36 inch lighted length so it's going to be a little bit larger than the canoe so my suggestion is that when you use these lights you start off with the lights here's the point that the edge of the light start off here and you want to kind of play with this before you start gluing or uh, sealing anything down just kind of run it up the edge there And again, I'm just kind of trying this out. I want to see how it's going to fit before I actually start adhering it. All right, and when you get to the top, you might want to go towards the back and then back up here, because remember, this portion is actually gonna be hidden when we put the star up there. All right, so I've gotten this far, and then I'm gonna run it back down this way. And what you're seeing here is that this piece is showing, so I don't want that showing. So I know that that's not gonna work if I do it completely around this bit here. So I need to readjust. So we're going to try it a different way. So I'm going to start at the bottom again, come up along the side, and then just continue back down here. Get down to the bottom, and then come here. So you'll see that it actually fits if I do that. All right, so we're not going to go along the edge here. We're just going to come straight along here. Now. There are a couple ways that you could do this. First of all, I'm doing it along this front edge, okay? Right here, just beneath where this row is. So I happen to think that that's a better choice for me. I like the idea of the lights right up there by the front. So you could actually, if you wanted to, instead of putting them right behind here, you could actually run them right onto this area. All right, so that's one option. Another option would be to run it on the back edge, okay? And then your final option 
well, it's not your final. I'm sure there might be some other options you could use. But another option would be to run it here on the front. But I like the idea of the light just kind of framing it, so that's why I'm going to end up using this here. Okay, so those are some options. Here's some other options for you to consider. And of course, the other option as far as the lights goes to not use them at all. All right, but if you use the lights, those are some options for you. All right, so you can use the Zots, which is what I'm going to try. And I want to use the Zots because if I use anything that is stronger than that, I may very likely not be able to pull this off a couple years down the road, you know, when this might not be working anymore. Hopefully it'll last a number of years. So I'm gonna try the Zots. If the Zots don't work, then I'm gonna to go to the glue gun. All right, I don't really wanna use the glue gun because it'll leave, you know, some glue showing and I don't really want that. These Zots I think will be better. So let's start with those. And I'm suggesting all of this because when you create, sometimes things don't work out as you originally thought they would. So I'm going to attempt to use this. So I'm going to put it right here in this corner. And it seems really sticky. And then I'm just going to kind of measure off. What I want to do is start this off at the end and there's a light bulb there. Okay, so there's a light bulb there that I'm going to stick it to, all right? But as I move on, I don't want to stick all of my Zots up underneath the light bulb. So I'm going to put it slightly off, just to the side of the light bulb. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this down and put some pressure on it. And it seems really sticky, so I'm, I'm really crossing my fingers that this is going to work out. We can only try. And again, if it doesn't work out, I'll just default to the glue gun. So I think what I'm gonna do is put the next one right here just to the left of the next bulb and then get that wire and really push it in there. And I'm using my fingernail to help it stick. All right, so here is a corner that I'm gonna have to take. So I'm gonna put one of these right here in the corner and then, again, use my fingernail to really push that wire down into the Zot. Okay. So now, I'm going to come up this side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the Zot just to the left of each one of these little bulbs. And I'll just continue on. Hopefully this will work out in our favor. And I always hold on to the wire that I previously worked on just because I don't want to pull anything off. And these dots really are sticky. Now, if you don't want to use your fingernail and you really want to embed it, you can take a mechanical pencil, pull in the lead, and then just start pushing. To make sure that it's really sticking. Okay. All right, we'll just keep on here. You remember to hold on to your previous work. Now, Zots come in permanent and removable. You want to make sure that you have the permanent kind.
And as I mentioned, I'm putting these right before the bulb, but you know, you can put them wherever they feel most comfortable for you. If you like to put it also in between these pieces, you can also do that. All right, so up here we're coming to a section that is a little bit indented, so I'm gonna push my wire down so that it goes to that indention, place my zot right there in that corner, and then push that down. Let's see, let me try this. There we go. Okay, so now this is going to come around the corner. So what I did is I held on to this edge and then bent it around here. All right, and then I'm going to put another zot right there. And I'm going to hang on to that corner that I built. All right, and then push that down again. And remember, just keep pushing down on these just to make sure that they're stuck. Okay, and back down the other side. Now I'm using white lights. I think there might be some colored lights. Um, I'm a white light girl for Christmas. Colored lights are good outside, but my interior designs, I, I really do prefer the white lights. They remind me of stars. Okay, we are to the end here, so I'm going to put one in the corner again and get that one to adhere down and then bend it this way. It looks like I might need to pull it a little bit tighter. Let's see. There we go. All right, we may have to do some adjusting there. And then I'm gonna put one here and another right here at the end. And then seal those down. All right, so what's gonna happen now is that I've got the battery pack And what I'm going to do is just kind of adhere it right here. And you can do this in a couple of different ways as well. 
uh, again, choices here, some options. I can hot glue this on. I can use Gorilla Glue, but that's going to make it really difficult for me to pull it off should it ever fail. I'm going to try the Zots, but I'm going to put a lot of Zots there, okay? Um, the choice here is going to be how you're going to hang something. So if you use this to hang it with, because it's got a hanger here, a hanger space, then you want to use glue that's going to make it really stick tight, okay? Um, I'm actually just going to stand this up. I'm not going to hang it off of the wall. It'll be on my mantle, so I'm not really worried about having to use this. And if you remember, we took off that piece off the top. So you could also hide this behind your greenery um, and put that back up to hang it on the wall if you want. So you have a few options. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to give these Zots a workout here. And I'm actually going to put them on the back of this. And I'm going to put quite a number on because I have, these are so small. You might even want to consider getting larger Zots, but we're going to give this a whirl. Since mine's standing up, I'm not too worried about it. And if it doesn't stay on, I can always come back and add to it. But I like the idea of being able to remove these if I have to. Now these are considered permanent, but I think I could still pull this off down the road if I needed to. Alright, so I did them on the edges. I'm going to do one right in the middle here. You know, another way that you could do this, now I've been pulling it off of this paper just because that's how I like to do it. But another way that you could do it is to find the Zot that you want to use, put it on the back, scrape it a little bit, and then pull off. So however you want to do it. If you don't like that stickiness, that's a way that you could go about it. So I'm going to put one more on. Pull it off. Okay, so now I just want to put this right here and just push really hard and hope this works. Yes, it does. Okay, so there's a black button off the side here and that's what turns it on and off. So I'm just going to flip it over for a second and we're going to turn it on and you can see the cute little lights there. Okay. All right. So just so you know, this particular one has an off position, a, a lit all the time position, and then a timed position, it, it appears. Okay. So those are some options for you. All right. So now we're going to start decorating this portion. Let me clean this up. And I still have my hot glue gun going because we're going to need it. And we are going to want to use the moss now. This is going to be exceedingly messy. So, uh, I hope that you enjoy doing this part of it. Make sure that your glue gun is not anywhere near the moss, otherwise you will get moss all over where the glue is. We don't want to do that, so I'm kind of clearing the table off a little bit, taking things away that we don't need. All right, so put this off to the side for a second. And I'm going to cut my bag open up here. And then here we go. It's time to make a mess. So what I do first is just open the bag and start spreading out the moss because it's kind of compacted. I don't want to spread it out too much. But I also don't want it to look like it's squished. 
So I start working on that now. If it doesn't come apart for you, go ahead and cut through it. All right. I think what I'm going to do to alleviate some of the mess is to get a piece of paper towel first. There we go. Okay. So now I have a piece that's, I'm going to say, oh, I don't know, five by five-ish. And what I want to do now is just spread it out. I don't want to pull it apart. I just want to spread it out. And you see that I have kind of a hole here, so I'm going to kind of pull this closer together. And then just like we auditioned the foam to see what was best for the foam, we're now going to do it with this. So I'm going to stand mine up for a minute and I'll show you. But essentially what I'm going to do is just to kind of fill in the Spanish moss so that it sits in there. Okay? Now, if this is too much Spanish moss for you, just pull off what you don't like and spread it again, okay? Um, I kind of want it thick, like a bird's nest kind of look. So I'm just kind of adjusting it, and I don't mind these hanging down. That's part of the charm for me. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in so that we can see what it looks like. And then I also will pull some of these out. I don't want bunches. I want it to be, you know, like a bird made a nest in there. So for me, this would be fine. Okay. Remember, though, that we have our drawer. Some of us decided that we're going to keep the drawer. If you want the drawer and you want people to easily be able to open that drawer, then having all of this hang down is not going to work. So my suggestion would be to pull off pieces a little bit at a time because you don't want to grab a huge chunk and mess up what you're trying to accomplish here, but just try to get a chunk off of there. Just so that there's a little bit, all right? Now, again, if that's still too much for you, just pull off, you know, whatever you, you don't want to use. I like the idea of the messy bird's nest look. So I'm fine with this. I may pull this off here and just have a few tendrils there. I'm actually going to put candy in here. So this is going to make it a little bit easier. Of course, people will have to hold this up and pull that open to get to the candy, but I'm okay with that. All right, so once you have decided what your design is going to look like, now see, I just kind of Put it in there and pulled it every which way. Once you've decided what you want it to look like, and also be very careful with your lights. I just managed to pull this off. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our hot glue, we're going to put it on the foam, and then we're going to lay this back in. Caution here. Remember that there are some open places in the moss. So you want to make sure that you're not touching that hot glue. All right. So I'm going to stand mine up for a minute. And I'm going to shake out any of this excess moss that's on there. Okay. And then I'm going to place my glue all over. Now, all I did there is my glue didn't want to come out, so I moved this. Okay, and try to get on the sides too. Definitely on the top. And you want to work quickly so that it doesn't dry before you can get back in. All right, so I'm going to stand it up a little bit here. 
All I want to do is to set this down in there. See how I'm being very careful not to touch the hot glue. And then I'm just going to kind of dip it to make sure it's not coming out. Okay. All right. Now I said I wanted to use a little bit of the green, and I will, just to give it a little bit of color. But we're going to be adding some other components that will help do that. So all I'm going to do is just kind of tuck these in to the moss. Just little bitty pieces. Just to give it some color, like a bird would do, you know? Different colors here. All right, so I just used a little bit. I don't want to use a whole lot. That'll do it for our moss. Okay. Let me get rid of this, and then we will start with working on the remainder. Okay, so remember that we had these sprays, and we want to prepare these sprays. Remember that the foam that's in here is only about this tall, so you don't want any of your sprays to have more wire than that. In fact, I would suggest having sprays that have wire less than that. So I have this owl. So I'm going to cut it, I'm going to say about an inch and a half, maybe a little bit longer, an inch and three quarters. There we go. And make sure that no one's around you <laughs> when you cut these. You don't want to send it shooting that way. This piece right here, let me see how I want to address this. Okay, so some of the sprays have components that are all stuck together, okay? And they're all stuck together on this one wire. And if you start pulling them apart, then you're going to have a tougher time of sticking them in here. You may have to get wire to rewire them. So my suggestion is for something like this, consider keeping it all one piece. I'm going to use this as a whole piece anyway, and more than likely, I will end up setting this owl kind of in like this somehow, okay? You can see it there, something like that. I'll figure that out in just a little bit. This one, on the other hand, has components that can be cut and use separately. So for instance, this whole piece here, I'm probably not going to use, but I'll probably cut it off. I don't know, somewhere around in here maybe. And I may just use just this top portion, okay? But I'm going to leave it alone for just a moment because I want to kind of get a feel for what I want to do. Then I have this leaf. If I kind of pull on it, You'll see that it has a wire on its own, so I want that to be separate. I'm going to leave it just like it is for the moment until I figure out what I'm going to do with it. Same thing with that. So you can see how you can pull all of these apart. Now, you don't have to. You can leave them just as they are, but I like to have options. So I tend to pull these things apart. Or should I say fight with them? Okay, and be careful when you're pulling them so you don't hurt yourself. All right, let's see what we have going on here. This looks like I could pull it off too, yep. So you can see that this has the little wire pieces here too, so I can pull that apart. There we go. And then this has two components. So you see there are two different components there. Now this one ended up having all of this paper, so I'm just going to pull that off. Okay, so that's good to go. So now what I'm going to do is build around a common point. Okay. 
So my common point is going to be this item first. So what I want to do is to situate it first. And then I can figure out how everything else is going to go. So what I'm going to do is take this point here and find exactly where I want to put it and then make sure that point is going into the foam. And remember with this kind of foam you want to try and get this right the first time because if you don't you just made a hole that you're not going to use again. Okay and then you can lay these items back. All right, so I'm not sure I want to use this one. I do love this one though. And I can see that going in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and hang on to these so they're out of the way. And then find the foam and put it in. All right, and then I can take this and just start moving it around a little bit, okay? All right, now I also want some of these berries. I don't think I want the white, and I'm not sure I want this. That If you like the uh, neutral colors and you want to keep it kind of monochrome, that would be all right. You could certainly put that in there. I want mine to kind of pop a little bit. Um, I'm not going to put this whole piece, though, so I'm going to do some... Uh, do a little destruction run here again. I'm going to pull some of these off. Because I'm not going to use a ton of them, but I do want some color. I think I'm going to get one more. All right, so I'm going to want three, I think. Okay, so I am going to actually put one back here. in here. This one's a little bit longer. And remember, find that foam. This is kind of the fun part. It seems like I'm working a little backwards by working in the back. After I've done some of the front, but I, I wanted that main piece to be in there first. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to have it come out right here. Okay. Now, let's see, do we want to have these leaves in here? Thinking that would be kind of cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it about right here. And then I'm going to cut off just these bottom leaves because these will be way down in the back anyway. You won't be able to see them. And that way... I'll have more space to actually put this in the foam. And I kind of like the idea of this being here. So I'm just going to try to get it down in there. There we go. 
And I'll move some of this out. There we go. Okay, so all of that's in. That's all of that that I want to use. I don't think I want any more of this. That's too much. And now it's time to put my little owl. I'm going to straighten that up so I can get it in there. And then just kind of get a feel for where I want that owl to sit. And I think I want that owl right up in here. So I'm going to push all this back so that I have space there and pull these logs in front. Okay, there we go with that. And then I have this leaf. I don't think I want that. That's too much. But you might decide you like it. So if you want that in the back instead of this, you can certainly use that. Okay, so now I want to take my star. So I have kind of a rustic looking star. And that star is going to go right there. So I'm going to take hot glue. And I think the best idea would be to hot glue right here on this top edge. And then I'm going to position that right where I want it. And then just push it till it cools. And if you happen to see any glue coming out the edge, which I do, just clean it up as quickly as you can. You can just scrape it off. And then just make any adjustments that you need to make. And let that sit for just a minute. While that is cooling down completely, I am going to open my little bag of candy. Put the candies in there. Uh, maybe keep out two or three for yourself. <laughs> All right, let's check that. Uh, give it another second or two. And again, remember that once you're at this stage, if there's a piece that you don't like hanging down, you can clip it, pull on it. Don't pull too hard because you don't want to pull all this out. All right, I'm going to just kind of dump that. Those little pieces that I don't want there. And then I'm going to put my drawer back in. And there we go. Cute little owl. All right. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. And I would love to see what you create, so be sure to share with us on our Facebook page. This is Anne Marie Fowler, Creative Director with Mystic Spring Studios.